Hey guys, what's up? Hope everybody's having a good day out there today. Thanks for tuning in. And I'm just heading back to Springfield from Joplin. Been up to the hospital most of the day. Dad had his third stomach surgery of the week, which is pretty unbelievable for 86 years old. But uh, looks like things may be getting a little bit better. And uh, you know, he's been in intensive care all week long, and maybe getting to move to a regular room uh, in the next day or so. But appreciate everybody's appreciate everybody's well wishes. Uh, that's a uh, much, much appreciated for that. So I just want to take a little bit of time while I'm driving back to Springfield and give you guys today's tip. And uh, what I want to talk about today, guys, is um, I want to talk about the month of June a little bit. You know, we're pretty much in the middle of the month. And uh, why June is the most unique month that there is in bass fishing. And this may give you some insights on some different patterns that work on your legs, some different things you need to try. And what I want to sort of touch on a little bit today is on a typical man-made impoundment. The reason that June is the most unique month of the year is the fact there's so much going on. There's so many diversities in what the fish are doing, yet there's also specific things that are going to produce a little bit better quality fish than other things. You know, the list goes on and on about ways you can catch bass in June just on a typical lake. You've got bass that are in you know, anywhere between a foot of water to, you know, 40 foot of water, depending upon your water clarity and water temperature and the species of bass that you have in it. So you have the bass using a wide range of water depths and type of structures. Also, in June, you've got a lot of other things starting to come about. For example, this is the time of year where a lot of the perch and the bluegill start to spawn. You know, the bass are gonna hang around, they're gonna try to feed on those spawning bluegill. It's gonna keep a majority of the, uh, not a majority, but a percentage of the population of the bass shallow um, all summer long. But specifically, some other things that are going on is this is when the mid-June, in my opinion, is when the biggest numbers of quality bass move out and they school up on structure. Doesn't matter where you're fishing at. I mean, it, it, if you have a lake that has, you know, just a typical man-made, four season, you know, bass movement behavior. In June, you have your biggest numbers of quality fish that are out on structure, schooled up in schools anywhere between, you know, just two or three school wolf packs up until maybe 50 or more in a school. This doesn't last very long, it's the thing about it. June is like the magical month for that as far as this is the time of year when you catch those big bags of fish like on one spot, making the same cast in the same spot over and over again. But as June turns into July, those fish will disperse more. You don't have those big schools out there like you do in June. But right now is when you have a lot of them out on those on those off storage structures. Other things that work really good in June right now, why it's so unique, is while you may have big schools of bass out in that 20 to 30 foot zone, you've also got big lone uh, rogue bass that can be caught on top waters, sort of in that mid depth zone. One of the cool things about fishing in June that I found about is the bass really relate heavily to secondary points. And you may have three different populations of bass, actually maybe three or four different populations of bass living on the same point. You may have some individual rogue, rogue uh, cruising bass that hang out right on the bank. They're like up there looking for crawdads, looking for perch, looking for shad, whatever. They may be in two or three foot of water. You might be able to catch those fish on a fluke or a top water. You may be able to move out on the point ends and sides, drag a football head jig or a big crankbait, you know, in that, you know, 10 to 25 foot zone and catch them. You may catch some fish on the same point that are suspended out of those point ends and sides. They may be suspended five or 10 foot down and, and they'll hit a swim bait on there. They may hit a, a topwater lure fanned out over the deeper water on the same points if you have enough water clarity. And also, you may have a lot of schooling activity occasionally come up on those deeper ends and sides of the point. So, bass use secondary points extensively in the month of June. It doesn't matter what time of the year that you have. You don't necessarily have to have cover on it. You, they can be clean gravel points. They can be clean rock points. You don't have to have brush or drops or that type of stuff. In fact, some of the better points that I like to fish in June are the flatter gravel type points that work really good. Docks are another good patterns. 
bass are always related to docks. They're related to any type of shallow wood cover. You can catch them on swim jigs, buzz baits, frogs. There's just a lot going on in the month of June. So uh, it's probably why it's one of my favorite months to fish. I mean, I, I'm going to guess about it, that, in my opinion, two of my favorite months to fish are like mid part of March when that water temperature starts to get up into the low 50s. And then in the early to mid part of June, when you have so many different options out there uh, like we have right now. So anyway, I just wanted to give you guys a, a quick little tip on that, or not a tip, or just a little, maybe some type of a little uh, seminar or whatever, when you want to call on that, uh, that sort of like, you know, signifies June being different than any other month that there is. And like you said, you'll see it predictably. It's like in the mid to late May, you know, you have a lot of those fish still in their post-spawn, late sprint, late spawn, post-spawn, they're still relating to shallow. In June, they do all the stuff that I've talked about. And then when you get into July and you start having a thermocline form on the lake, then the, start, the fish start to do something completely different. So we'll talk about July when it comes up. But anyway, that's just a few things to think about in June few things to remember about uh, and hope some of that helps you catch a fish or two more over the next couple weeks so anyway thanks for tuning in guys appreciate everything appreciate all the support and we'll be back soon see you